Well, great. Well, we are wrapping it up with our final press conference of the day um, here with San Diego Wave FC members. Um, before I uh, turn it over to them, I open it up for Q&A. Just those of you who are new joining on Zoom, just let me know if you have a question, raise your hand. Uh, I will call on you. We do have some folks in the room um, as well, but we're here with head coach Casey Stoney, goalkeeper Kaelin Sheridan, and midfielder Savannah McCaskill. Um, I guess, Casey, just to kick us off, obviously, coming off of last season, top of the league um, in the regular season, we're now in this new format of a Challenge Cup. Um, just kind of some of the energy and, and feelings around the team heading into the new season starting tomorrow. Yeah, I think the overall feeling is like excitement and anticipation to start. Um, obviously, we've had quite a few players away with international duty for long periods, but everyone's back now. It's great to have the squad back together. Um, I think, you know, we were happy last season that we won the league, um, but we want to be more consistent across the board about performances home and away. Um, we want to start that tomorrow with a, a good performance out here. Um, we're ready to go. I feel like we've got, you know, a lot in our locker room that can hurt them. Uh, we know what their strengths are. We know what they've done in the recruitment window. We also know what we've done in the recruitment window. And adding this one to my left is a big weapon for us now. Awesome. Uh, we'll open it up for questions. Anthony Mercedes, AGM Sports. Coach, um, last season, obviously you finished first place, but Gotham wins the, the championship. This this Challenge Cup, is it a chance for you to prove that you, you really were the best team? Are you looking at this as kind of a... We were the best team in one league. Are you, um, so are you looking at this as a chance to prove that even more tomorrow? And how important is this Challenge Cup to your, to your season? I think every trophy is important to us as a club. Every trophy and every tournament and every competition we go into, we're aiming to win. You know, that's why we are we are where we are after two years, um, because we strive to be the best. And tomorrow's just the start of that. We know we're playing against a good side. We're a good side. I hope it's a great advert for women's game and it kicks off the NWSL season the way we want it to go. Um, it's the most competitive league in the world. And I think everyone will see that tomorrow. Dan? Yeah. Dan Alvetta from Equalizer. Kaylin, you played for this club when times were, shall we say, lean. Um, I think you maybe were part of a couple one-off games here at Red Bull, but just wondering your thoughts now seeing the team win and being back in a situation where they're hosting a match like this, so how things have changed here. Yeah, I think um, lean is the nicest way you could put that. Um, we'll struggle, but it's good to see that teams are coming up and, and doing well, and I'll always have a special place in my heart for this team and this club, um, but ultimately, I want to I keep the butt. Um, <laughs> 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 I think that it's it's incredible to see. Like we want to grow the women's game, we want to see it push forward, and that ultimately does happen with success on the field. And um, we can get people to rally behind them. And I know they'll put out a great crowd tomorrow. This team has a lot of passion um, for the game, and it always has, and that's what's kept it going. Um, but yeah, at this point, I just want to be them. Ready? Ready, country CBS Sports. You obviously spoke about winning the league. It was a good season for you last year. You got close to the championship. But what were some of the things that you identified that you needed to improve over in this offseason? What have been some of those messages that you've been sending to the team to make sure you cross the finish line this year? I think it's about building our style of play even more. Um, obviously, we brought in new players as well and embedded them. Uh, we lost a few in terms of the turnover. Um, so it's being more consistent. I think if we've got more of the ball, more control of the game in larger periods, we've got more chance of winning. Um, so we tried to build that out in this preseason. Um, our home form wasn't as good as it should have been last year. Our away form was excellent. So making sure that we're a little bit more on the front foot when we're at home, we're a bit more aggressive with the way we play, and we put teams on the back foot a little bit more. So, yeah, we've been working on that. Um, and we want to be consistent across the board. So does everyone. And anyway, every team's going to start this this league campaign wanting to win. Um, we just have a, I think, a roster that is capable of doing that. We'll go with Uh, Hi, Coach. Steph Young from The Athletic. Um, You know, we just had Gotham in here with Crystal Dunn and Kelly O'Hara, two veteran players talking about, you know, understanding that there's more exciting games now, but also acknowledging that the players are getting squeezed, schedule crunch. So maybe this is more a question for Kaylin and Savannah about acknowledging that, you know, the league, other leagues around the world are all trying to find ways to make the schedule more exciting and enticing for fans, but acknowledging, you know, you guys just came off uh, a hard gold cup. 
uh, hard preseason, and then CONCACAF is introducing a new qualifying tournament. There's an Olympics this year, et cetera, et cetera. Just wondering what you find most useful as a player, what you think would be most useful in helping to either mitigate that or simply, you know, change up the planning so that players, you know, are are safe as they're playing through a, a tough schedule. Um, I think the first thing that we want to look at is we got back last week and we had to fly across the country, which is basically all of Europe, to get to this game to start off the league. Um, that's a big impact on our bodies, and that's something that wasn't really up for discussion. So I think that's something that should be brought to the players and the coaches as a discussion topic rather than just a decision made from anybody else. Um, I think there's a lot that goes into our bodies and throughout the year. And we definitely want to make this the most powerful league in the world and, and compete at the top. And I think we're seeing that it's causing a lot of injuries across the world, not just here. So there's a lot that needs to go into the research behind that and what's going on and um, what's going to be most beneficial for the players, but also beneficial for the sport, because we are seeing the growth and the demand that women's soccer is wanted across the world. And we want to be able to provide that at the highest level possible. And I think we are seeing some more research go in. I think I just saw something Jessica Bruno put out about doing some research and really wanting to look into that, um, which I'm all for. And I really, I really support and, and appreciate her um, just dive into that a little bit more. Um, but ultimately we, we do need to look at the impact that the travel of this country does have ultimately for me. Yeah. Um, I completely agree. I also think when looking at games, like as players, we love to play games, but we also want to play quality football. And like, there's a difference between quantity and quality. And so the more and more that we just keep adding to the schedule, it's harder for us to recover. It's harder for us to put out a quality product for the fans to watch. And so therefore, like, you have to look at both sides. And so I think it's just going to be a matter of opening that discussion with players, coaches, performing staffs um, and not just making executive decisions from the top down without having those discussions. Thank you both. We'll go Abraham Zapata. Hey guys, uh, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to, I mean, both for Caitlin and for Savannah, you both were on Gotham and um, I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit to how you have changed as players and um, what your goals and um, hopes are for this season. Uh, yeah, I think I kind of spoke a little bit to it. We were here at a time where it was a bit of a struggle, and it's great to see the club grow so much, and I think we're definitely a part of those growing pains. Um, but ultimately, I think I wouldn't trade it because of how much I grew. I grew as a player and a person, and um, I realized my passion for wanting to develop women's soccer in this country and in the, around the world, and um, the level that we were at just wasn't good enough, and I think we were part of a group that really wanted to make change. And I think you can see that here now. And we're really proud of what Gotham has been able to do. Um, what, even though we're not here, I think it's, it's incredible to see clubs all across the country grow um, in every aspect, not just on the field. Um, so yeah, still want to beat them. Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much the same thing going off that. I was a rookie, my sky blue and we were shifting facilities and, Blah, 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 blah. The stories are all out there. You've all heard them a million times. But I think for me, like, it was a eye-opener of what I needed to do to make sure I took my career in my hands and then, you know, help progress this league forward. And so I think I would, as Kayla said, look traded for the world. But also, now that I've moved on and I'm at San Diego now, I've went to Brown. this nice trophy center. <laughs> Uh, Chris Brooks. Hi, KC. Chris from She Kicks. I just want to ask how how you're feeling, really, and how much you've been able to recharge for this season, and why this continues to be somewhere that you want to be. Because it's obviously the worst place in the world to live than San Diego. But what are the crucial elements that sort of go beyond that for you? This time, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I think like one of the main reasons I came to the end of yourselves because I wanted to try and I believed in when I was a player leaving the shirt in a better place and I was a head coach and I leave the game in a better place and I felt that coming here I could have an impact um, 
give the players a different experience of coaching and an environment, culture, where they feel valued, safe, cared for, challenged, developed. Uh, so I've obviously read all the things that everybody else has read and I wanted to make sure that the players knew that is the only way that things need to be done. I've been a player. I think I've experienced every single high and every single low in the game. Uh, so being able to manage the players in a different way doesn't mean I don't get it wrong. I do absolutely all the time. Um, but I think coming over here was an exciting challenge tactically to bring something different as well. Uh, trying to influence the game to be less transitional, more control, while still playing at the high intensity that this league is, and it's fast. Uh, managed in England, this is a lot faster, a lot more intense, and going back on what the players were saying about the schedule, we want to keep that intensity, we have to look after the players, we have to look after their bodies. Um, so, you know, I'm a, a big advocate for the players, I think the game is about the players, without the players, we don't have a game, so... I came here to, to try and make a difference. I think this league is the most good one it is. Look at the, the league last season, how many teams can still qualify for the playoffs in the last day. That doesn't happen in any country. We've got two or three teams fighting it out. So I think it tests you as a coach. It tests you as a manager every single week. So find those fine margins and how you can win. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm loving life here. My family is settled. I've got a fantastic group of players and staff around me. and We just want to continue to grow and build. Thank you, um, Amor. Hi, uh, for Casey. Um, I want to ask you about uh, what do you think of the growing of the league since you get here and talking about, and I mean, uh, the Women's Gold Cup. Uh, most of the players that won the title are playing in the NWSL. Uh, what does this say to the, world, to the world of women's soccer about the level that you are playing here? Well, I think if you want to play international football at the highest level, you come here. This is more replicatable to international football and the speed of it than any other league in the world. I think that's why you're seeing an influx of international players. I think there's quality players coming into the league, quality players already in the league, and it's going to continue to grow. Uh, we want to make it the best league in the world. Uh, I think stadiums, we have probably the most consistent in terms of the best stadiums in the in the world, the crowds that we get, I can only speak personally at San Diego, but I was at Manchester United, that's the biggest brand in the world. We did not get those sort of fans in that crowd. So, you know, and hopefully we'll have a fantastic crowd here tomorrow and it's going to continue to grow. The first women's football, I call it football in this country, um, it's great. And uh, the fan base is great and it's going to continue to grow. And it's uh, for my job, it's about the advert we put out on the field to make sure that people want to come, keep paying to watch and keep coming back and, and become a fan for life. Anyone else? Dan? Caitlin, just a quick follow-up. When you said that the players weren't really given an option about coming here, did you mean the extra game on the schedule as the Challenge Cup or the fact that you had to come all the way out here to play it? Uh, I mean, in general, just the location of the game itself. I think that was just decided without, as I'm pretty sure, any um, intervention from anybody on San Diego. At least. Not the game itself. We're Really proud to be in the Challenge Cup, and um, we know we're going to come out on top. So we want to show what we were capable of last year. And although the teams are a little different on both sides, um, I still think we have a better side. Yeah. This is just a travel question. Uh, Liz Robbins, uh, Caitlin, uh, and. and Savannah too, I mean, you are still flying commercial. Obviously, that is something that has been talked about. Do you at least get premium upgrades? Yeah. Do, you, do you get space? We chartered here. We did have the opportunity to charter here, so that was very helpful to yeah. this travel. Um, we don't sometimes get that upgrade. We get a nice little window seats for your eyes if you want it. Um, and how hard that's still up to the league to make, again, the players who have to put out an incredible performance to make sure that we get fans coming in and out and have the best league, best league in the world. Um, we're going on the biggest flights of any league. And in order to do that, sometimes we have to connect, sometimes we have to sit in the back of the plane. Um, so the league gets to make that decision. And I hope that going forward, that decision gets changed because it ultimately it has a big impact. And we're really thankful that we had the opportunity to charter here. It made the trip a lot more beneficial and, and easier on our legs. 
And was that a team decision or is that a, a league decision for you to take a charter plane? It was the league's decision. And just on that, obviously, I know I've been part of meetings recently. The league is looking to add more legs to charter flights. So teams do have that option. So I do think in terms of player welfare, we are moving in the right direction. We've still got some way to go, but I think we are progressing, which I think from a league perspective is a real positive for the players.